in sports training, as I understand it, particularly training of elite athletes. Now, a lot of the, um, well, not a lot, but a certain amount of the training focuses not so much on developing the physical abilities of the body in relation to a particular skill, but are more to do with the psychology of what it is to be an athlete, psychology of uh, performing in, at the uh, at the moment in which one has to um, demonstrate those physical abilities and skills. Uh, and uh, I heard it referred to that uh, at the actual peak of, of of any physical sport, the uh, it's ultimately a mind game. Who wins on the day is a mind game. Uh, whatever it may be, r running or weightlifting or archery or anything like that. Uh, and the training programs associated with sport uh, always incorporate some kind of sport psychology training. And that quite often dips into things like Zen meditation or um, kind of mindfulness training, that kind of area of practice which surprised me quite a bit when I first came across it because you don't usually associate, at least I don't usually associate sports people with, um, with kind of contemplative or meditative practice, but apparently that does feature. Uh, why am I talking about that? Well, I suppose what I'm interested there is, the, is um, a kind of understanding of training, performer training, training for performance which is not associated with any particular uh, sporting achievement or sporting enterprise. It's to do with the kind of preparedness of, uh, of the self, of the psyche, if you like, to engage in that activity or to, to deliver that activity on demand under, under situations of high pressure. Uh, and as I said, the, the, the techniques used for that tend to be things like Zen meditation or, or something like it. Uh, well, there's two things fall from that, I think. Firstly, is uh, there's clearly a relationship between that, that kind of training practice and the kind of training practice that you get in, in the arts, in theatre training or dance training, something like that. While theatre training and dance training regimes typically do have specific uh, skills and uh, abilities that they impart, whether it be something like fencing or whether it be ballet or whether it be particular kind of vocal production, or whether it's a particular kind of um, dance technique or whatever. In addition to that, there's also, usually in training regimes, something else that corresponds to that kind of um, psychological training that you find in sport. I don't think it's usually separated out to the same extent, and certainly um, there's, not, uh, there's not a formal branch of performer training in the arts, which corresponds to sports psychology. Um, in fact, there should be, I don't know, but th at the moment there isn't. Uh, if you, you might occasionally get, uh, get particular classes in, um, you know, in, in how to cope with stage fright or something like that along those lines, but there's nothing specifically targeted at the psychology of performance at the level which I'm talking about it. Uh, at least nothing that's named as doing that. I think it, it absolutely embeds itself within the uh, within the training regimes and practices. It's just not made overt. So most training will include what they tend to call warm-ups or preparing sessions, uh, or it'll be built into kind of some kind of devising process or some kind of process to stimulate creativity or some kind of process to facilitate collaboration. Those kind of, or icebreakers, that kind of uh, exercise. Um, but I think what's often being delivered in those, under different names, is, as I say, this kind of psychological training to do with uh, uh, psychological preparedness. Uh, a, 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 yeah, a, a, a way to play the mind game so that you uh, deliver any other kind of skills and abilities you might have. Uh, in an optimal way. The other thing that falls out of that, for me at least, is what this thing consists of. What is, what, what kind of practices are underpinning, what kind of ideas are underpinning these um, these exercises? I think uh, I'm not absolutely sure. There's probably a range of different ones, but certainly some of the exercises seem to be to do with um, 
What are they to do with? They're a kind of to do with presence and being there, that's, I think. They're kind of to do with a, um, uh, a kind of determination to ally conceptualization that goes on with the physical experience of being in that space at that particular moment. Um, a kind of unification of mind and body. But I think that's, that's often misunderstood, I think, that, that idea. I think when you're talking about a unification of mind and body, I think what, in this particular context, uh, I think you're talking about something akin to... Um, Oh, God, what are you talking about? I kind of had it and it's wandered off. But it's, symptom, it's something like... I'll tell you what it's like. There's, a, there's a, um, an exercise in a book called...